They traded Bo! They traded Bo! They traded Bo Horvath to the Islanders! And they got a package that's actually not bad! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Bo Horvath is gone! Bo Horvath, you are a New York Islander! Oh my goodness! Just when I thought the impossible was going to be done, the Canucks do it! All-star break, whatever. Yeah, that's what they said. They said it was the all-star break. That was the turning point. Vancouver Canucks GM Patrick Alvin announced today the team has acquired forward Anthony Bavillier, center Atu Ratu, and a protected first for the 2023 draft from the Islanders in exchange for Bo freaking... Horvat, and you know what? I know a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, what did we got fleece? Where's the top name prospect? Whatever. I, <laughs> you know, if you've been following this channel for years, years, I'm saying like ever since 20 like 19 ish. You know how high I am on Atu Ratu, and you know every single time. I make a video talking about Atu Ratu and how good he is and how much Islanders fans supported this guy and everything. I always get just a good circle of love in the comments. Islanders fans replying to me on Twitter, posting in the comment section, hey, we love this guy. We love this guy. This guy's going to be the future for our team. He's so gosh darn good. And now he's a Vancouver Canuck. Let me tell you this. So Anthony Bavillier coming back the other way is the quote-unquote roster forward coming back. Like, he is 25 years old, so just a tad younger than Bo. First-round pick from 2015, making 4.15 until the end of 2023-2024. So this entire process of having to re-sign somebody is gonna introduce itself again next year, but Bavillier has been a pretty consistent 25 to potentially 40-point left-wing center player. He maxed out as a career high of 39 points in 68 games played in in 2019-20, but this season he's on pace for 33 points. It's a little bit lower than what he's used to, but the Islanders, as we've known, they don't really go out there with super high-octane offense most of the time. They like to play a little passive. Their top scorer on the team, Brock Nelson, only has 46 points on the season. And also coming into this trade is Atu Ratu. Now, I am so, so happy to see this guy being the return, and there's a reason for that. Atu Ratu was supposed to be the first overall pick in 2021. He was. It was supposed to be Ratu, and then whoever else was there. Owen Power's name wasn't really a household name until the year before the draft. Atu Ratu was incredible. He was a phenom in the Finnish junior hockey scene as a 15, 16-year-old. He was supposed to be the next one. But in his draft year, he did not make the World Junior Team. He struggled tremendously playing in the Liga, and his numbers just were not sufficient as a potential first overall guy. You saw a lot of people talking about his confidence. What the heck is going on? Is it all between the ears and behind the eyes? What's going on with Atu Ratu? He was supposed to be first, but he slipped all the way down to 52, and the season after, he had himself a point-per-game year in the Liga. Like, you don't just go out there and have a down year and you stay down if you're somebody who is as talented as Achirachu is. You go out there and you bounce back in such a way where it's like, okay, this guy in his draft plus one, he's 18, 19 years old, gets 40 points in 41 games as a 6'2", 187 left-handed center in the Finnish Liga. Like, if you took a look at that guy, that guy probably should have gone a lot higher than 50-somethings overall, 52nd overall, excuse me, in the draft before. He then goes over to the Bridgeport Islanders. He does well in the playoffs there. He does well for Finland at the World Juniors. And then this season, he played 12 games with the Islanders, scored two goals. One of the goals, by the way, scored against the Canucks, which was on that Tuesday some few weeks ago. And for the Bridgeport Islanders in the AHL, the guy has 15 points in 27 games played. 32 points in 56 games is the projection here. Now, Ratu, I am such a big believer in. Here's the scouting report. He generates so much power on every release by sacrificing a quick drawback, instead taking his sweet time loading downforce into his lever action wrister. It's a hard, accurate shot when he has the time and space to send it on net. He'll drive the center lane with the puck nearly every entry, and he isn't shy about setting up shop at the net front, even if it means paying a physical toll on every shift. He's a versatile forward, has the ability to stick handle faster than some players can think while remaining ready to share the puck. 
This guy was supposed to be like a first line caliber, maybe 70, 80 point center, had everything gone right before the draft year disaster happened for this guy. There was so much potential, but he just kind of lost it all when he ended up not making the World Junior team and playing poorly in his league play that season. The Islanders took a chance on him though, and there have been so many people just raving about how this was a steal of a draft pick and everything. So the fact that Vancouver got Ratu in particular, that to me makes this a very worthwhile opportunity for the Canucks to go out there and explore. Plus the first round pick, which Elliot Friedman says is top 12 protected this year. So just in case the Islanders end up going out there and crapping the bed and they get themselves a first that is somewhere in the top 12 of this year's draft, I assume it slides over to next year. The Islanders are 19th in the NHL right now. 19th, 55 points, 52 games played. They could very well drop to a position where they're in the top 12 of the draft. Let's take a look at this right here. Columbus, Chicago, Anaheim, Arizona, San Jose, Vancouver, Montreal, St. Louis, Ottawa, Detroit, Philadelphia. Okay, so Philadelphia at 22, that's the cutoff for 12th overall, I think, if I did my counting correctly, which I don't know if I did. But either way, the Islanders are just outside that cusp. They could miss out on the playoffs and get like 15th overall, and the Canucks will get that pick. The Vancouver Canucks could realistically have two top 15 picks this season if the Islanders continue to do poorly, which, I mean, look, they're going to have Bo Horvat. They're going to do a lot better. Bo Horvat playing with Barzal, that's going to be cool. You know, I got to say this at the end, though, too. It's just so kind of like uh, it feels bad and like I was excited maybe like five minutes ago thinking about the trade and just seeing the Canucks actually getting Ratu back and Bavillier both of whom I like plus the first round pick from a team that isn't like too high up there in the contender status like this is not Tampa Bay Colorado Boston whatever who are like near the top of the league okay no Colorado's not really there but like you get what I mean this is not a team that's super high up there that could have given the Canucks like a 30 somethings overall pick this is like New York, who's right there in the smack dab middle of the first round right now, in the bottom half actually too. But now thinking about it, Bo Horvat is gone. Oh my gosh. 27 years old, 6 feet, 216 left-handed center sign until the end of this season making 5.5. Ninth overall pick taken by Vancouver in the 13 draft, and he was a guy initially acquired from Vancouver with the pick used in the Corey Schneider trade. One for one with the hometown Devils in that season's draft. So Vancouver got themselves a captain. He was the captain for four seasons. He had 54 points in 49 games played in his last year as a Canuck and 31 goals. Quite fitting that in his last season, he ties the career high he had in goals the season prior with 31. He was on pace for 90 total points and 52 goals. But unfortunately for Bo, this great season came a season too late to remain as a Vancouver Canuck. Had he, like, just gotten re-signed, like, a year ago, in the summer, before Miller, this could have all been avoided. The Canucks could have had Horvat on for, like, $7 million a year, and he would have been able to get, maybe, let's say, 30 to 35 goals every year, because he's on pace for 52 this year. I don't really know if he's a 50-goal scorer, but lo and behold, Bo Horvat, it's been a blast. I, I still remember when he made his debut, man. 2014-15, Willie Desjardins, he was the rookie on the team, and the playoffs he came alive against Calgary and actually did well. He had a few end-to-end -end rushes that made him look so good and promising, but this is the end. This is it. Bo Horvat maxes out with 61 points in a career-high year for Vancouver. His career-high in goals was 31, which he accomplished twice, and his career-high in assists was 34. He was a good captain, good leadership guy. He said the right things to the media. But, hey, he's an Islander now. I'm kind of getting the sense that a lot of Islanders fans might not have wanted to do this deal. Like, I don't know. I'm just looking at Twitter right now, seeing what a lot of them are saying. And it's, oh, Lou Lamorello, Lou Lamorello, Lou Lamorello. Okay, please, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this. Because I was going to upload another video, like, the second before I recorded this one. But, uh, yeah, no, the Canucks ended up making a trade for Bo Horvat. Ay, yeah, yeah. If you guys don't end up re-signing him, then that's going to be a disaster. But thoughts in the comment section below. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this finisher. I was Rolls 99. And bye.